Whew, it's tiring. Absolutely everyone on the internet has been asking me if I've seen this video of Italian chefs criticizing my version of a pasta carbonara. We're gonna prop that up, finish it with a tad bit of salt. I have, and today we will reflect on this and react to it. But first, I wanna say, how the hell did they get three Italian chefs to agree on what a proper carbonara should be? Everyone has their own variation, and I very clearly said in the beginning of my video, it's called a buttery carbonara, and they criticized me for putting butter. So joke's on you guys, it's time to react. So these guys are all Italian chefs. I have a lot of respect for them, but my problem is, is that again, with the internet, if you cut some information, some very crucial information out, people tend to understand things differently. If I was making a traditional carbonara recipe and they were criticizing me on my traditional carbonara recipe, then they are 100% right with what they're saying to me. But the fact is, I wasn't making a traditional carbonara recipe. I was making a buttery, full of cholesterol, really heavy, really fatty carbonara recipe. And it's in the title, buttery carbonara. I added butter to a carbonara. I know, I didn't say Italians add butter to carbonara. <sighs> the internet is a very tiring place. So, let's play it and see what they say. First step, butter. You can see they're reacting not so nice. They're like, ah, this guy messed up already from the beginning. He's adding the butter just like that. Yes, that's the whole point of the video. This video is actually sponsored by a butter company. And so the only thing they're actually saying I'm doing wrong is the butter. They hated that I added salt at the end. That's something I do just, it's kind of like automatic for me. I shouldn't be salting a pasta like that. So that's 100% true. I know in a traditional recipe of a carbonara, you're not supposed to add garlic and butter, but that's the version I like to make, and I add butter and garlic, and I didn't say it was traditional. What's even more impressive, and that's why I wanted to do today's video, is that usually Italian chefs don't agree on things like this because there are so many variations to a certain recipe. La carbonara di per sé non può essere definita come una ricetta perché ognuno la interpreta secondo una propria tecnica. Che come sempre dico, la carbonara può essere interpretata perché è soltanto una questione di ingredienti e non di ricetta. Partiamo dalla carbonara, si chiama la nascita della carbonara, viene servita all'interno di un nido. Different restaurants you go to will use different pastas, different ratios of water and protein and eggs and flour to their pastas and different ratios in their sauces. So today I wanted to show you how to make a really basic pasta recipe, so I teamed up with Landers and we wanted to do a really quick kind of like recipe after making the fresh pasta ourselves. I feel like making fresh pasta at home is so rewarding and it's something that's really tiring because you do need to knead the dough for a long, long time, but it's absolutely delicious and it's always worth it. Put the Italian chefs out of the way here and let's just get straight to it. So how do you go about making fresh pasta? Well, there's two basic things that you need for any type of dough and that's something with water. So it doesn't have to be just water, it can be something that contains water and then flour. Those two things together, kneaded, you develop gluten. Gluten is what gives you that elasticity and that's what's needed in different types of pastries and cakes and doughs and stuff like that. Pasta, there are tons of ways you can do it. No one really has a golden ratio. Every different chef has a different way of making it. Every nonna, which is an Italian grandmother, or every house cook in Italy that makes their fresh pasta does it in a different way. Get creative, throw an elbow drop in there. There are a lot of variables you can't really control because it is a combination of the one I like to make, flour and egg. Because an egg, for example, egg whites are made primarily of about 90% water. So that's your water component. Egg yolks have fat protein and some water as well. So that kind of gives you that nice bounce to pastas, which is why I like using whole eggs and flour. And those are the only two ingredients I'll add. Maybe a little bit of salt just to season the pasta so that when you cook it, you don't have to add too much salt to it. But the problem is the size of the eggs will be different. So the water content will be different. The uh, flour that you might be using might be using a finer grind or a coarser grind. So all these different kind of things that come together, you can't really say put one cup of this with one egg because it'll always be different. That's why people always tell you when making fresh pasta, it's all about the feel. So what you wanna do is develop a dough that's not too sticky, not too dry, develops nice elasticity. That's kind of like Play-Doh. And then you're gonna rest it for about 20 minutes. This helps just 
keep things together, makes things nice and silky and smooth. I'm gonna make it today the simplest way possible and that's just by hand and then rolling it out with a rolling pin. Everyone has that at home or can have it at home. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a bottle of wine or a bottle of whiskey or whatever is kind of round and has the same shape. And then I'm gonna cut it by hand, but I also do have a pasta rolling machine. So I'm gonna do two batches, so that way you guys see the difference between something that's rolled by hand, something that's rolled by a machine, and then cut in the machine. Whew, talking a lot today. So let's get to it. First things first, I'm gonna roughly kind of figure out how much flour I need. About 150 grams I'm looking for right now. Actually, it's double it. We'll do 300 grams. So again, this is rough. If things get too wet, add more flour. If things get too dry, add more yolk or egg white. So once I have this 300 grams of flour, I'm just gonna put it down on a board here. So I'm gonna make a well in the middle. So I'm gonna start with my whole egg. So it's basically, this is two egg yolks and two whites. All I need to add now is two yolks, two additional yolks. So I'm first gonna mix in all the yolks and the whites together and then I'm gonna add a little bit of kosher salt. So once the well in the middle is really nicely created, then I can go ahead and start adding some flour from the side. Once your fork has become pretty much useless, we can go ahead and start working the dough by hand. As you can tell, I can already quickly see that this is a little too dry because maybe the eggs that I got this time are a little smaller. So what I'm gonna do is just add a tiny bit more of my egg whites. There, the dough now is coming together much better. So after about 30 minutes of kneading, you have a dough that comes together nicely and that breaks away just like wood Play-Doh. So this is kind of like where I want it to be. So what I'm gonna do now is just work it all up into a nice ball. Grab some ceram wrap, Put that in there, and I'm gonna rest that for about 20 minutes, and then we'll come back and then roll it out. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes, and we seem to be good to go. So first thing I'm gonna do is just flour my surface a tiny bit, because once you roll things out, you don't want your pasta to kind of stick together. So I got my ball of dough here, take it out, and as I said a while ago, I'm gonna cut it in two because I'm gonna do two versions, one hand rolled, one rolled by machine to show you the difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this ball of dough here. Right before I use it, I'm gonna knead it actually for just a couple minutes more just to make sure that it came together nicely as it was resting. And as you can see now, the texture has changed dramatically. When I break it, it's actually more of a smooth break. I'll start with something about the size of my palm. I'm looking for something nice and thin to start with. Once I have that, you see how it stretches nicely and it's not breaking? That's perfect. I'm gonna fold it onto itself. I'm gonna do that maybe four times and then roll it out again. So you're basically gonna stop once you've got the length of what you think the pasta should be. Starting to get some nice length here. I'm very happy with this. And now we just have to cut it. So we're just gonna roll everything. But I'm gonna go ahead and start doing some pasta segments and this will really determine the size of our noodles. Next, much easier way, we're gonna do things with our pasta roller. So we're gonna go ahead and roll out our dough again. Once I've got that, put it through the machine. At this point, we're gonna start again. Remember how we folded the last one, so we're gonna repeat that a couple times here. So you've got this beautiful sheet, no holes, nothing. We're gonna go ahead and select how we wanna cut it. So again, I'm going for a thicker style. So I'm gonna put that in here. And at that point, you have this beautiful, kind of well-combined, nice and floury pasta. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other portions and then we're gonna go and cook our cacio e pepe. Time for the cacio e pepe recipe. It's one of the simplest Roman pasta dishes you can find out there. The pepper I have is ground black pepper, which I just pounded a little bit just to crack it. You can do so a little bit more if you want. If you use like powdered pepper, it will not work. You're looking for something nice and coarse. And the idea here is you just really get a lot of peppery flavor. So it's up to you how peppery you want to get. All right, 
let's get going. So pasta water is in, some nice coarse salt to give some flavor to the pasta as we cook it. Once the salt is dissolved, we're gonna go ahead and grab our pasta and throw it in the water. So my pan here is already, as you can see, nice and high. So since this is a heavy set pan, I can already go ahead and turn off that fire because that will stay hot for a while. Your pasta will start floating. For me, that's my indication that it's almost done. But the best way to do it, just take it out. Okay, slightly bouncy, which means when we cook it a little bit more in the warm pan, it's just gonna break down a little bit more. So I'm gonna give it maybe one more minute in here, and then we're gonna go ahead and transfer it. Pasta's pretty much cooked. I'm not gonna drain it because I want the water to carry over. You'll see the cheese will start melting a little bit. So little by little, add a little bit of water. It's gonna thicken with the cheese and everything should get naturally creamy. As the cheese is melting down, I'm gonna go ahead and add my black pepper. Everything is thick, luscious, and beautifully combined. I'm gonna go ahead and plate it. Cheese and pepper and pasta, so good. Absolutely delicious. The pepper is there, but it's not too fiery. It really comes down to how you like it, if you want to add more pepper or less pepper. You need zero salt because the pasta has a little bit of salt. Then you have the kick of the cheese that's extremely flavorful and savory. And it just comes together in an absolutely beautiful dish. Now, Italian chefs, please don't judge me anymore. <laughs> if you like this recipe, guys, please try it at home. Um, it's really quick, except for the pasta making. And it's really easy to do. Um, as long as you have the proper ingredients to do it. And as always, thanks for watching and please subscribe if you like this video. See ya.